What's going on guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna to walk you through six easy poker strategies that all serious poker players should know. These are the top simple poker strategies that I'm gonna walk you through today with step-by-step -step example hands to beat several major poker player types, including loose aggressive players, tight players, our fishy friends, the recreational players. I'm gonna show you when to bet, raise, bluff, when to fold, all that good stuff. And we're gonna start off with some basic hand reading as well, so let's jump right into it. Counting down from six to one, by the way, basic hand reading. This is something that all poker beginners and serious poker players watching this video need to understand in order to take your game to the next level. And what is hand reading? Well, hand reading is basically the art of putting your opponent on a range of hands. I wanna be very clear off the top that poker is not like what they show you in the Hollywood movies where I'm gonna put that man on a hand. That's not how we think about the game in the modern era, guys. We always try to put somebody on a range of hands. So for for example, like in the hand we're gonna discuss here in a second, we can put this player on a certain range of hands, such as pairs, trips, two pairs, straights, flushes, and so on. I think you guys get the idea. So let's jump into it. You have two red aces and a tight player, and this is critical to this hand, raises you on a river of three, six, seven, eight, ten. And that's a rainbow board, meaning that there's no possible flush on this board. Now we're gonna assume earlier in the hand that you raise pre-flop, very, very standard over the hand, like pocket ace is the best hand in the game, and you probably bet the flop, you got called, you bet the turn, you got called, now you're betting again on the river in order to get the maximum value. Guys, I can tell you from my 10 plus years experience as a professional poker player that when a tight player raises you here on the river, they always have something that beats one pair, and that's the only thing that matters here, guys. A lot of people get really wrapped up with a big pair like pocket aces here, but at the end of the day, pocket aces is one pair pair on this board. So if this player has two pair, a straight, a set, which means three of a kind, or anything greater than that, they are ahead of us. And that's the only thing that matters. So when a tight player raises you on this river, let's put them on the range they're going to have. They're going to have pocket threes, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket eights, or pocket tens. All of those hands are a set or three of a kind, which is better than our hand. Or they're going to show up with a straight. As you guys have hopefully noticed on this board, any nine on this board makes a straight. Straight. So hands like ace nine, jack nine, 10 nine, for example. Guys, a lot of people will mistakenly talk themselves into making the call here by trying to convince themselves that this player has pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks, or maybe they just have a hand like king 10 or something for top pair. Guys, you need to understand that tight players don't play those hands in this manner. And that is why it is so critical that you understand the player type when you are employing hand reading at the poker table versus a loose and aggressive player like we're gonna discuss in a second, or our recreational player, Fishy Friends, they will be raising with those hands in this situation. But versus those tight passive players that you see everywhere in today's games, those players simply do not raise rivers here without three of a kind or a straight. So in this situation, yes, you should be throwing away your pocket aces. All right, guys, let's move on to easy poker strategy number five, and that is understanding all about flop continuation betting. Guys, this is your bread and butter strategy at the poker tables and it's literally a money printer in today's games. I'm gonna walk you through some simple math so you understand this better. So first of all, a C bet in poker is a continuation bet. We're going to assume that you are raising preflop the vast majority of the time. I've discussed that in many videos here on the channel and therefore you're going to make a bet on the flop whether you hit the flop or not and that is crucial the large majority of the time and we're going to bet a small amount and I'm gonna walk you through the math in a second on why that is so profitable. So for example, you've got ace king offsuit, meaning two different suits. You raise it up pre-flop, you get one color, flop comes down with a 10, 5, 4. So obviously not a good flop for our hand. I don't need to tell you that if you played any amount of poker. This is not the flop we're looking for with ace king. However, we need to realize that our opponent on average is going to miss the flop two out of three times in poker and therefore most of the time they don't have anything either. And since we actually do have the best current no pair hands, if they have a hand like king queen for example, or king jack, or nine eight, we are statistically far ahead of those hands and so we're not even bluffing in this situation, we're actually betting for value. And the other critical point here guys is that you only want to bet a small amount. I would suggest 50% of the pot. So for example, the pot's $10, you bet $5. Hope you guys can see where we're going here, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. We're going to get folds most of the time because most of the time,
time they don't have anything on this board. And number two, we're not risking anything here. We're only betting a small amount, meaning we don't even need to get folds mathematically that often in order to make this play profitable. So that is why guys, on most flops, even when you miss and you're just up against one player, you often want to just be making a flop continuation bet. Let's move on to simple poker strategy number four. Now let's talk about the aggressive poker players now. This is the number one player type I get asked about is what do you do versus these loose and aggressive players who are always trying to bluff you. They're always playing so many hands. You can never put them on any kind of range of hands. Well, guys, the basic principle here is do not fight fire with fire. Don't try to bluff these players back. What you should be doing instead is just flat calling, especially in position. And that is gonna be on the seats, specifically the button and the cutoff. I'm gonna put the image actually on your screen right now so you understand what I'm talking about. The button and the cutoff are by far the two most valuable seats at the poker table because you're going to get to act last on the flop turn and river which is going to be a massive advantage for us in outplaying these aggressive poker players because we simply get to see what they do first and we get to react to them instead of us having to make our decision in the dark and letting them have all the advantages in the hand so for example you have two red nines pocket nines really good hand but this is not a premium hand guys this is not one of these hands you can go all in preflop so for for example, you're on the button and you have this hand and a loose aggressive player raises. What you should do here, guys, is just flat call. What this is going to do is it's going to keep the size of the pot small and it's going to cap the betting so we can just go to the flop here. What you do not want to be doing, especially with one of these mediocre but kind of good hands like pocket nines, is re-raising here. Because what that does is it opens the door for a loose aggressive player to do what loose and aggressive players do and that is to bluff you back and put you in a rough situation so guys the best way to play against aggressive players is often to just let them hang themselves let them do what they do best just let them bluff off their chips just call pre-flop often just call after the flop as well and let them just keep bluffing at the pot because if you try to bluff them back often you're just going to get two possibilities neither of which is good for you they're going to bluff you right back which puts you in a bad spot or there's simply just going to fold their hand and if you have something good like pocket nines that's not a good outcome for us all right guys let's move on to simple strategy number three now let's talk about another player type now which is the recreational players who i lovingly refer to as the fish all right guys so you've no doubt encountered these players in your games before they play way too many hands they chase every single draw and they don't fold anything they love to call they love to play the sheriff that's what they do they're just there for fun these are the players we make the money against in poker and we we don't make money by trying to bluff them. So for example, you've got ace queen offsuit versus a fish and by the river, the board reads king jack seven, four, six with no possible flush. Guys, what you should be doing in this spot is checking and giving up. I know it's painful. We always want to try to win every single pot, but guys, all serious poker players, all good poker players know that you simply can't win a ball in poker, and especially versus this particular player type, you're just gonna get looked up by a hand like king eight, jack nine, seven five, ace four, nine six, on and on. Guys, you already know that these players play all of these hands and so many more and they're not folding anything these players don't fold bottom pair so guys do not shoot yourself in the foot and put yourself on tilt at the poker table by trying to bluff the players who don't fold just check and give up in a spot like this maybe they'll check behind and your ace queen is good but don't dig your grave any further in spots like that all right let's move on to the flip side now number two of how to play against the recreational players now we're going to talk about a situation where we actually have something and what you want to be doing is is value betting big versus the fish. Now let me explain a value bet first. This is a situation where we have a strong belief that we have the best poker hand. And since we know that fish play almost everything, as we just discussed, we don't need a whole lot in order to have the best hand. We're gonna talk about a situation where we have top pair here. So we know that fish are calling stations. They call with any hand. So you've got king, queen offsuit, and by the river, the board is 10, queen, four, seven, three. Once again, no possible flush. Guys, 
recognize what you should be doing in this situation in direct opposition to the previous hand is you should be betting big. I would suggest betting 80% of the pot, even bet 100% of the pot. Sometimes I even over bet, especially if I have them on tilt. I have an entire chapter on that, by the way, in my first poker book, Crushing the Micro Stakes. I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you wanna check that out. But guys, let's run through all of the hands here that are going to pay us off that a fish, a calling station will happily call us with here and hands that they certainly play as well. These will be hands like Queen Jack, Queen Nine, Queen Eight, Ace 10, King 10, Jack 10, 10 9, 10 8, Ace 4, 5 4, Ace 7, 8 7, 7 6, Ace 3, Pocket Jacks, Pocket Nines, and Pocket Eights. Guys, there's even more hands I could go on and on. This is the reason why we want to make a strong value bet versus these players. Once again, we already talked about these players do not like to fold, all right? So we want to bet big here. We want to understand that versus this player type, because they don't like to fold, we can get away with a much bigger bet size than we can versus the tight players, the regular players, who you're no doubt more used to playing against. The other thing is we need to realize just how many hands we're ahead of here, which you can already see from this short list of the range that I've created here. There's a ton more hands that they will call with that we're ahead of. So guys, in situations like this versus the fish, when you have top pair, bet big for value. Do not let them off the hook. All right, let's move on to the number one simple poker strategy that all serious poker players should be using these days. And this is something I've been mentioning for years, guys, is that you're going to get ahead in today's games by studying away from the tables. Guys, it is an absolutely amateur hour strategy to think that you're just going to show up at the poker tables and expect to win. No serious poker player thinks that way these days. They never think they know it all because the game of poker is always changing and therefore if you are not evolving with it and learning the latest strategies and simply improving your skill set, you're going to be left behind. I have seen so many quote-unquote talented poker players over the years get left in what I call poker's graveyard because they got an ego in this game. They thought they'd climb to that mythical top of the mountain of knowledge in poker. They knew everything and they're just going to win forever. And guys, the game of poker just simply does not work that way. So serious poker players are studying their hands away from the table. I've talked about so many times how I have literally spent 10,000 plus hours in a program like Poker Tracker. I'll link that up in the description below. Studying my hands, studying the other good players in my games to find my leaks, to find out what I might be able to do better and so on. This is one of the absolute number one ways that I've been able to get ahead over the years and maintain my level of dominance as a professional poker player is by constantly putting in the hours away from the tables, studying my hands and improving. I've also read countless high level strategy books. I've also written three of them myself and I have literally enrolled in every advanced poker training program out there. Again, I will link up all my recommendations in the description below. Guys, there's even more stuff. You can hire a coach. You can watch YouTube videos like this. By the way, make sure you subscribe. Guys, bottom line, there's never been such a plethora of good information out there to quickly improve your game. My suggestion if you take poker seriously is for every two hours you play, you put in one hour away from the table studying and improving your game. This will do more than anything to get your results moving in the right direction. Guys, don't get an ego in this game. Never think you know it all. That's for amateurs. You take the game much more seriously, so you need to start putting in those hours away from the tables. Guys, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and also if you want to know my entire strategy to beat the small and mid stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That will be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope a few of these tips helped. I will catch you in the next video.